That is Diddy apologizing for what he was caught doing to Cassie Venture on hotel cameras. In case you missed it, this is what happened. There has been a lot of public outrage. And let's just say Gene Deal's recent interview is an absolute jaw dropper. But when I seen that Diddy stuff hit the, from CNN, I said, I know Art gonna call me, Art of Dialogue gonna give me a call. Oh, you already know I was about to hit you, man. Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, man, so with that being said, man, um, let's get right into it, man. What you think about the video that came out today of Diddy pitting his hands on Cassie? Man, you know that was crazy. And I know people going to think that, you know, yo, this is all what Gene wanted to see. But now listen here, man. The devil got a purpose. God got a plan. Do you understand what I'm saying? The devil got his purpose, but God got a plan. You understand? And it's all in God's plan, man. You understand? To let people see because a lot of people wasn't believing that this stuff even existed, brother. A lot of people didn't even think that this was that, you know, Cassie was telling lies. Gene been telling lies. Lil Rob been telling lies. Everybody lying on Diddy. But Diddy told the truth. Diddy's the only one told the truth. He said, y'all, just keep watching. The truth will soon come out. And you see what came out? My man, he punching that little girl in the head. Yo, you don't even kick a dog, man. You don't even kick a dog, bro. He kicking that little girl like she's a dog, man. That, yo, know, it was crazy, man. Any man that that has a sister, any man that has a, 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 a friend that's a girl, any man that has a child, I want to beat the, you know what I'm saying? We can't say that on television, man, or, 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 or on the internet or YouTube, but any man who saw that, Wish they could put their hands on Diddy at that time, bro. That shit was appalling, bro. It was crazy, man. And when I saw it, you know, I could imagine what Kim went through. I could imagine what Misa went through. You understand? It was just crazy, man, for that dude to do that to that girl like that, man. I can't believe what I seen, man. I still can't believe what I seen in that video, man. Like the way he was kicking her was like he was kicking a field goal, man. Bruh, when I saw him run down the, first of all, when I saw the white towel, the white towel, I got flashbacks of him and Ja Rule running out the room. <laughs> of course, they had, uh, what's her name, Sarah and the other girl in there, but I had that flashback. And then when I seen him run down the hallway, I had flashbacks of when the same gang was chasing him. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? And then when he put his hands on it, no jokes aside, because I know it's not no laughing matter, man. The shit just was appalling, brother. And I don't, I, I, I don't even know how they could even play that on, 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 on television, on YouTube like that, and without even putting up some uh, sensitive, you know how they put the sensitive, uh, Subject matter, I wouldn't have never allowed him to do no shit like that around me. That's why he probably never did nothing like that. You understand, when I, I got the aftermath, when they told me to um, go over to St. Luke's Hospital, cause Puff was over there in the hospital, that was the aftermath. You understand? When Kim cut his wrist up with that court screw, his right wrist, they got pictures on the internet with his wrist banded up. Kim did that. You understand? The aftermath of them being in the Swiss hotel and he roughing her up and like he playing fight with her and then she runs out the presidential suite and we got the big room in there at the Swiss hotel. And then I'll be like, yo, you all right? And she like, yeah, I'm all right. It ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? You good? She like, yeah, good. And then she go back in the room with, with, uh, with Puff Diddy, Brother Love, whatever he call his name is. So, 
You know, it's always the aftermath of something like that, bro. But in front of you, only people who commit crimes commit crimes around people who commit crimes. You know, Puff know who to do that stuff around. And that was crazy, man. Um, when I looked at that thing, to be honest, I, th I thought that the people who was watching it, because you know at those hotels, they have security personnel that watch that stuff. And if they didn't call the police, they should be in jail. I don't care what nobody say. You know, whoever watched that tape and didn't submit that to the authorities, they should be brought up on charges. Gene also went on to claim that Diddy would likely take his own life over the Cassie video. Do you think Diddy can come back from this? Because a lot of people saying it's over for him. Oh, it is over for him. Come back to where? To be in the entertainer business? Listen to me, man. And I don't want to bring this guy's story up because it's old. And I know he's trying to live past it, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. Ray Rice, his wife, spit in his face. And he did what he did on that elevator. He ain't played one football game after that, nowhere that I know of. He may have went overseas and played or something like that. I don't know that to be true. But he didn't play in the NFL, a hell of a running back. He ain't played not one down in the NFL after that. No endorsements. Nobody's going to have anything to do with old boy. And when they come out with this other stuff, he gonna come back to work. I won't. I wouldn't be surprised if he do the ultimate sin, his suicide. If he because bruh, he's so he's such a narcissistic that he couldn't stand not being somewhere and not being seen. His whole life, his whole career was about him being seen in the public. It was about him, you know, taking everybody else's dreams and making them his. I said, let him. And he said, Eugene, why you said it? I said, man, listen to me, man. He ain't no good to nobody if he talking about hurting himself. His life don't belong to him. His life belongs to God. What he should be trying to do right now is work his way towards God now. For real. And not that devil he been worshiping. That those people got him believing. You understand? That's the true God. Because everything from what I know since I've been around him you know, everything that's gone forward has been that of the devil. The drugs, the alcohol, the partying, everything has been of the devil. And he's been leading not only himself, our people, into some kind of damnation through his actions. Yeah, I'm just in disbelief, man. I mean, to see his downfall. I mean, he's been on a long run, man. So, you know, to see this is crazy, man. I mean, how long has he been famous? Nah, so you got to realize he didn't get his fame until after he made... With a violent 2016 surveillance video released on Friday that appears to show rapper mogul Sean Diddy Combs kicking, pulling, and hurling an object at his then-girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, in the hallways of a fancy hotel, Diddy's public reckoning has reached a new boiling point. The disturbing footage, obtained and published by CNN, appears to substantiate some of the allegations made in Ventura's November complaint against Combs. According to CNN, the video was shot on March 5, 2016, at a now-closed Intercontinental Hotel in Los Angeles. The video appears to show Ventura, a singer who goes by the name Cassie, heading down a hallway toward elevators, with Combs following her in a towel. He pushes her to the ground, kicks her repeatedly, and then tries to drag her down the corridor, probably back to their room, but she frees herself. Later, he seems to throw a vase at Ventura. 
Ventura, who dated Combs and was signed to his label, claimed in her lawsuit that he abused her, encouraged her to have sex with male sex workers while he videotaped, and then raped her. The lawsuit includes allegations about a 2016 incident at the Intercontinental Hotel. In a statement issued at the time of the action, Combs' attorney said, Miss Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies, aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation and seeking a payday. However, the release of the footage this week appears to corroborate at least some of the charges leveled against the musician. Ventura's case, which was resolved one day after it was filed, sparked a flurry of similar lawsuits, many of which contain graphic and distressing information. Plaintiffs claim that Diddy, born Sean Combs and sometimes known as Puff Daddy, Puffy and Love, raped them and, in some cases, trafficked them by coercing them into having sex with other men. Together, the incidents have turned public attention to long-standing claims of abuse against Combs, prompting several brands to break connections with him and Hulu to cancel his impending reality series. Speculation about the claims grew after federal investigators raided properties in Los Angeles and Miami Beach related to Diddy, revealing that the raids were part of an ongoing investigation into sex trafficking allegations. Combs has disputed the allegations, claiming in a December statement, I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Diddy was a figure of great power, particularly in the 1990s and 2000s, not only in hip-hop, but also in the economic and entertainment sectors at large. In recent months, however, several people have sued him, alleging that he exploited his power and fortune to sexually victimize and, in some cases, traffic them while dodging prosecution for decades. The cases have piqued the public's interest, in part because Combs was such a powerful executive and gatekeeper in music and fashion while being the target of numerous claims of abuse, including arrests. They are among the first big allegations in years against a prominent player in the music industry, which many believe has failed to address abuses of power, even at the height of the Me Too campaign. Combs is just one of many powerful men who have escaped scrutiny, but whose alleged past behavior is being scrutinized with new and critical eyes, in some cases thanks to landmark New York laws that have allowed people alleging sexual abuse to file civil lawsuits after the statute of limitations has expired. Indeed, Combs is now being compared to R. Kelly, with longtime critic 50 Cent declaring that he will create a series about Combs in the vein of the bombshell docuseries Surviving R. Kelly, with proceeds benefiting assault survivors. Dream Hampton, the producer of Surviving R. Kelly, told The Times late last year that the Bad Boy founder will receive an accounting. Puff is done, she announced. The lawsuits against Combs also demonstrate that despite recent pushback, the Me Too movement and the resulting legal and societal changes have had a long-term impact. Even if claims of sexual assault and harassment do not dominate daily headlines as they did in 2017, the reckoning is still happening and no industry is likely to be immune indefinitely. Combs is a producer and rapper who has become an important personality in music, media, and fashion. He founded Bad Boy Records in New York in 1993, when he was in his early 20s, and immediately signed Notorious Big, whose two albums helped define New York hip-hop during that period. Bad Boy became a multi-million dollar corporation, and Combs produced renowned 1990s talents like Jodeci and Mary J. Blige. When Biggie died in 1997, Combs recorded a Grammy-winning tribute, I'll Be Missing You, which helped inaugurate a commercial boom in hip-hop that lasted until the end of the 90s, according to Michael Spector of The New Yorker. Combs was also a pioneer in combining hip-hop, business, and luxury. Sean John, his fashion label started in 1998, rose to prominence in the high-end menswear market. He promoted vodka and tequila businesses and threw private white parties in the Hamptons for visitors, including Martha Stewart. Though no longer as significant a role as he was in the 1990s, Combs remains a wealthy and well-connected celebrity. Last fall, he hosted a joint album release and birthday party attended by stars such as Naomi Campbell and Janet Jackson, performed for a sold-out crowd in London, and made a surprise $1 million donation at his alma mater, Howard University. As Combs expanded his business, he was accused of numerous acts of violence. 
His first public brush with scandal occurred in December 1991, when he assisted in organizing a star-studded event for AIDS education at New York City College. A reported 5,000 people showed up, much more than expected. An anxious mob waited for hours to reach the gymnasium's solitary entrance door. A stampede resulted in nine deaths and dozens of injuries. It resulted in at least 10 civil litigation and eight personal injury claims, some of which included Combs as a defendant. According to the BBC, Combs testified as a witness in a case against the college in 1998 and was finally ordered to pay at least $750,000 in legal settlements claimed by victims and families. As hip-hop rose to the forefront of American mainstream culture in the mid-1990s, a civil war also erupted between factions on either coast. If Bad Boy Records defined the East Coast sound, Death Row Records, co-founded by Marion Suge Knight, was the California-based cultural equivalent. Tupac Shakur, Death Row's biggest star, was shot five times in the head, groin, and hand, while in the lobby of Quad Studios in Times Square on November 30, 1994. Tupac and the notorious Big, a.k.a. Biggie, had a tight relationship, but the injured rapper felt Biggie and Combs were involved in the shooting. They were both inside the building that night. The shooters stole Tupac's diamond ring and gold chains, but not his diamond-encrusted Rolex. Nobody else at Quad Studios was attacked. No one from Bad Boy Records was ever linked to the shooting and both Biggie and Combs officially denied any involvement. Tupac released several songs that directly mocked Biggie and Bad Boy Records. Witnesses reported seeing Combs' then-bodyguard argue with Jai Hassan Jamal Robles, a member of Death Row's entourage, inside an Atlanta club in September 1995, just before Robles was shot and killed. Eight years later, Combs' bodyguard was killed in a firefight in Atlanta. Tupac Shakur was slain in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas in September of 1996. Six months later, Biggie was killed in Los Angeles in a drive-by shooting. For years, Combs was plagued by suspicions that he was complicit in Tupac's death. Combs described the claims as pure fiction and completely ridiculous. In half a year, two of hip-hop's brightest stars died. For Combs, the storm continued. In 1999, he appeared in a music video for Nas' song Hate Me Now as a crucified Jesus wearing a crown of thorns. Combs apparently had second thoughts and asked Interscope Records executive Steve Stout to remove the segment. He did not. Later that day, Combs allegedly went to Stout's New York office and, as Stout told the Los Angeles Times, punched me in the face, then he grabbed the phone and bashed me in the head. Combs was arrested and charged with felony assault. He eventually pled guilty to a reduced charge of harassment and was sentenced to one day of anger treatment. He apparently paid Stout a large out-of-court settlement. The same year, he was shot at a Manhattan club while attending a party with his then-girlfriend, Jennifer Lopez. Witnesses said they saw him with a pistol, but he was eventually acquitted following a public, closely-watched trial. He has also been accused of making threats and engaging in assault against women. In a 2019 interview, for example, his ex-girlfriend Gina Hewen stated that he threw a shoe at her and dragged her by her hair. However, until now, these reports have gotten little attention from the general public. Cassie, actual name Cassandra Ventura, filed a lawsuit against Combs in November, accusing him of sexual abuse and trafficking. Ventura said in the lawsuit, which was first reported by the New York Times, that she had been abused by Combs for years, beginning shortly after she met him in 2005 when she was 19. She claimed he assaulted her repeatedly, including stomping her in the face, and then raped her in 2018. She further claimed that he trafficked her by forcing her to have sex with sex workers in several places while he videotaped and masturbated. She attempted to remove the photographs and videos thereafter, but Combs retained access, she claimed, in the lawsuit, forcing her to view a video she thought she had destroyed. Ventura's lawsuit also claimed that Combs and his accomplices used their influence and riches to coerce her into silence and obedience, with his workers threatening to harm her music career if she spoke out against him. In one particularly frightening detail, Ventura said Combs threatened to blow up musician Kid Cudi's car because the two were dating. 
the car eventually exploded. This is all true, a spokeswoman for Kid Cootie told The Times about the car explosion. Combs, through his lawyer Ben Braffman, accused Ventura of blackmail. For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to Miss Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship, Braffman said in the statement, accusing Ventura of lying in her lawsuit to get a payday. According to Ventura's lawyer, Douglas Wigdor, Combs offered Ventura money in exchange for her silence, which she declined. Ventura's lawsuit was resolved for an unknown sum in a single day. The singer announced that she had decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. But Ventura's choice to come forward publicly sparked a rush of reports of assault and abuse. Three additional women soon sued Combs. In her second lawsuit, Joy Dickerson Neal claims he drugged and assaulted her in 1991. In the third, Liza Gardner claims that in 1990, he forced her into sex and suffocated her, forcing her to lose consciousness. Combs' lawyer, Jonathan Davis, claimed in a statement to the Times that Combs also disputed these allegations. Because of Mr. Combs' fame and success, he is an easy target for accusers who attempt to smear him. In the fourth action, a woman named Jane Doe claims she was a junior in high school when she met then-bad boy President Harve Pierre and another Combs associate in Detroit. According to the lawsuit, they convinced her to go on their plane to New York, where they and the rapper gave her drugs and booze before viciously raping her. Miss Doe has lived with her memories of this fateful night for 20 years, during which time she has suffered extreme emotional distress that has impacted nearly every aspect of her life and personal relationships, according to the lawsuit. Given the brave women who have come forward against Miss Combs and Mr. Pierre in recent weeks, Miss Doe is doing the same. In response to the lawsuit, Combs issued a statement rejecting all charges of violence, describing them as sickening allegations fabricated by individuals looking for a quick payday. Pierre has also disputed the allegations, saying in a statement to TMZ, I have never participated in, witnessed, nor heard of anything like this, ever. The women came forward last year because two New York laws, one of which paved the way for E. Jean Carroll's successful lawsuit against Donald Trump for sexual abuse and defamation, created limited time periods in which people can file civil lawsuits alleging sexual abuse, even if the statute of limitations has expired. One of those windows closed in late November, which explains why there were so many complaints. While the suits primarily depict actions that the plaintiffs claim occurred years ago, a February petition by Rodney Jones Jr., also known as Lil Rod, claims that Combs exposed him to unwanted touching and sought to groom him while they collaborated on the Love Album, Off the Grid in 2022 and 2023. Jones claims that at a party in 2023, he was forced to drink tequila mixed with narcotics and awoke naked with a sex worker sleeping next to him. He claims that Combs offered money and threatened violence to persuade him to hire sex workers and perform sex acts with them. Combs has rejected Jones's allegations. In a statement, Sean Holly, a Combs lawyer, stated, We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies and labeled Jones nothing more than a liar who filed a $30 million lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. In the aftermath of these civil claims, raids in Los Angeles and Miami Beach in March indicated an apparent criminal investigation. According to the Times, federal prosecutors in the Southern District of New York and Department of Homeland Security investigators conducted raids on the rapper's properties as part of an investigation. Little information was available in the immediate aftermath, and Combs' lawyers have yet to react to requests for comment from Vox or The Times. However, the raids indicate a potential new level in the Combs' investigation, with law enforcement sources telling the Los Angeles Times that they were related to sex trafficking charges. Combs was thought to have fled the country on Monday after flying to Antigua on his own plane, but he was later photographed at Miami Opa Laca International Airport. Regardless of his location, the rapper is once again the subject of intense public attention following investigations in Los Angeles and Miami Beach. The growing number of reports 
along with their unsettling specifics, have caused companies and powerful people in the media and business to distance themselves from the artist. Diageo, the beverage giant with which Combs collaborated on vodka and tequila, has removed his image from its website. Capital Preparatory Schools, a New York charter school network that Combs helped expand, said on its website that it was terminating relations with him. The message was later withdrawn. Combs also stepped down as chairman of Revolt, a television network he helped launch in 2013. The Combs lawsuits are emerging amid a slew of other allegations against prominent musicians. In November, a woman sued Neil Portnow, the former head of the Grammy Awards, alleging he drugged and raped her in 2018. The same month, a former employee sued music executive L.A. Babyface Reed, claiming he sexually abused and harassed her, causing irreparable harm to her career in the music industry. They also come at a time when Yeah, a music and fashion mogul whose career parallels Diddy's, has lost many of his brand partnerships following public anti-Semitic and racist statements, as well as what many say was a years-long pattern of verbal abuse and harassment, which may have been kept quiet in part because collaborating with him was so profitable for brands. While the Me Too movement forced reckonings on sexual assault and harassment in industries ranging from film to other media to restaurants in 2017 and 2018, Many in the music industry believed that its top performers escaped relatively unharmed. R. Kelly, for example, faced minimal consequences until Hampton's widely watched 2019 docuseries resurfaced the charges, despite multiple allegations of sexual intercourse with underage females, several lawsuits, and even a 2008 criminal trial for child sexual abuse material. Many believe that Kelly was given a pass for so long because the women who came forward to expose his abuse were black. In 2021, he was convicted of sex trafficking and sentenced to 30 years in jail. The following year, a second 20-year sentence was imposed, with all but one year served concurrently with the first. In 2017, three women publicly accused another important music business figure, Russell Simmons, co-founder of Def Jam Recordings, of raping them. Like Kelly, he was the subject of a documentary about the allegations, but he has not been charged. Ventura and the other plaintiffs are now describing violent rape, intimidation, and abuse by one of music's most well-known figures, someone who embodied hip-hop's rise to mainstream and high-end society. In his prime, Combs was a symbol of power and influence in music, fashion, and business, and the cases indicate a renewed willingness to hold that power accountable. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching. But when I seen that Diddy stuff hit the from CNN, I said, I know Art gonna call me. Art of Dialogue gonna give me a call. Oh, you already know I was about to hit you, man. Um, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, man. So with that being said, man, um, let's get right into it, man. What you think about the video that came out today of Diddy pitting his hands on Cassie? Man, you know that was crazy. And I know people gonna think that, you know, yo, this is all what Gene wanted to see. But now listen here, man. The devil got a purpose, God got a plan. Do you understand what I'm saying? The devil got his purpose, but God got a plan. You understand? And it's all in God's plan, man. You understand? To let people see because a lot of people wasn't believing that this stuff even existed, brother. A lot of people didn't even think that this was that, you know, Cassie was telling lies, Gene been telling lies, Lil Rob been telling lies, everybody lying on Diddy. But Diddy told the truth. Diddy's the only one told the truth. He said, y'all just keep watching. The truth will soon come out. And you see what came out? My man, he punching that little girl in the head. Yo, you don't even kick a dog, man. You don't even kick a dog, bro. He kicking that little girl like she's a dog, man. That yo, know, it was crazy, man. Any man that that has a sister, any man that has a a, a, a friend that's a girl, any man that has a child, I want to beat the. You know what I'm saying? We can't say that on television, man, or on on, on the internet or YouTube. But any man who saw that wish they could put their hands on Diddy at that time, bro. That shit was appalling, bro. It was crazy, man. And when I saw it, you know, 
I could imagine what Kim went through. I could imagine what Misa went through. You understand? It was just crazy, man, for that dude to do that to that girl like that, man.